Okay. Okay, I'll, I'll use the uh, John Wick answer, which is, yeah, not really. <clears throat> Another spoiler right there. <laughs> so what it does is it recycles things that I gave it. Okay, it has a very limited repertoire of how to take certain words out of a certain sen sentence structure and turn around and ask about that word. So it basically just you know, go through all of that stuff here. There's absolutely no artificial intelligence of any kind of processing underneath. It's really it's just you know, understanding some basic English grammar, be able to extract you know, verbs and, and nouns out of the previous sentence, and then recycle it. And when it encounters things it cannot you know, understand, then it comes to you know, something like, I think you're blocking what you really want to say, because I don't know what you're talking about. There's nothing from your sentence that I can reasonably recycle as a question. So that's Eliza. Eliza has been around for a long time. Um, so for those of you who do not know, you know any of this context, I first encountered Eliza on the Tandy Radio Shack computers. You have to ask your grandparents, because even your parents cannot answer that question. Your parents go like, I think your, my father owned a computer like that. That'll be your grandpa, okay? So this is a very low CPU requirement kind of program, and it's it basically it looks like it's intelligent, but it's not. And in a certain way, ChatGPT is like that because it's a large large language model. So what is the problem with a large language model? All the go ahead. Say again. It cannot think. But everything is circular because all the words are circular. You cannot define words with other words and expect it to eventually lead to something that's meaningful, right? Because if I ask you what is blue, you, you guys just look outside, it's like, that's blue. You don't have to answer my question. You don't have to say, well, I think blue is about 460 nanometer in terms of your wavelength. You can just say, look at that, that's a sensation. But chat GPT has no connection to sensations. So eventually, all the words, you know, everything is getting down to the pattern of words. So that's kind of the, the thing that you, it, you, you should understand about you know, the current AI technology. So isn't that kind of fun? <laughs> <clears throat> well, I don't know, because you know the you know, that does resemble what your know, therapist would do in a session, right? You know, they, they may not understand what you're talking about, but they would just keep asking you questions based on what you say. <laughs> and then they charge you with a bill of 150 bucks an hour. Huh? <laughs> We're timing out. Are we going to chat? <laughs> yep. But you have to pay for that. <laughs> yep. So anyway, this is a this is an interesting you know program. It has been around for a long time. Eliza has been around for a long time. Um, yep. All right. So this is prologue. Um, so you can kind of imagine that if you enter. Okay. This is a good example. Okay. The Simpsons. Family tree. Okay, so we'll look into this one. Yep. Come on, give me the full resolution. No, don't do it. Fine, I don't have a Pinterest account. I know some of you cannot believe it, but I don't have Instagram, I don't have Pinterest, I don't have Facebook, I don't have X. Hmm? No Snapchat. Hmm? Nope, not quite that old. <laughs> oh, I cannot open this. Dang it.
There we go. I think this one will open up. Yep. Yes. Yep. It is not resumed. But I think I might have missed a little bit earlier. Ah, okay. All right. So if you look at the family tree, okay, um, and you encode everything, right? So you encode, you know, who is the parent of whom, and then the gender of the people. Um, then eventually you can ask the question of, show me all the granddaughters of blah, blah. Okay. You can show me, you can, but grandchildren or grandkids or grandparents are easy. Okay. Because you're just following the tree here, but cousins are harder because what is, what is a cousin? What is the definition of a cousin? Hmm? That's very specific. That's too, way too specific. So who is a cousin? So if you look at this chart here, we, I know you cannot really read the names. Um, I'll just point it to like this person versus th this person here. Are they cousins? Yeah, they're cousins. Um, I'll point to this person and this person here. Are they cousins? Okay. What about these two? Are they cousins? They're not cousins because they have the same parents. Right? Okay. What about um, between these two? They're not cousins because one is a parent, the other one is an offspring of that person. Right? Okay. So it would look like that cousins have to be staying at the same level, but that is not true either. Because when I point to this person and this person here, are they cousins? They are cousins, one removed. So the so-called removed is basically, um, if you look at the level in the family tree, they are off by one level. Okay? So what about first cousin versus second cousin versus third cousin and so on? What is that referring to? Exactly. Okay. So if you want to consider siblings as a cousin, how would you name siblings as a cousin? Remember, first cousin is how we usually associate as a real cousin. Zeroth cousin, that's right, okay? Because they share the same parent. You don't have to go up one, one level beyond the parents. So you can now start to understand, okay, so sounds like Prolog would be great at doing stuff like this, right? You encode the family tree, you encode the rule of what a cousin is, okay? Including, you know, the degree, like, you know, where is the common ancestor, and also, you know, how many removed, okay? Then it can find you, confirm whether one person is the other person's cousin, and it can also find you all the nth cousins. You know, like, I want to find all the cousins, and I don't even care, you know, what, you know, how, how many levels removed, you know, the, your query can potentially return that too. So that's going to be the next homework assignment. We'll build it up, okay? You know, I'll show you some basic tricks of how to do this. But for those of you who have a, you know, is it called gene geneal genealogy, where you study your ancestry? I think so. I think that's the term referring to you know, the studying of one's your know, family history. So if you have you know, like a good you know, chart, okay, going up like five or six you know, generations, then you can actually ask the um, once you enter all the data into Prolog. Then you can start to ask your inter interesting questions. It's like, show me all the cousins of so-and-so. Then you can specify first cousin, second cousin, and so on. So that's potentially one homework assignment. I think it's kind of fun because you can use real, you know, uh, actual um, you know, family tree information. You know, so you can show your parents. It's like, oh, look at this. You know, I can find all my cousins. <clears throat> um, that's one potential homework assignment. The other potential homework assignment is to use Prolog to implement a shortest path algorithm. <laughs> so that is an interesting thing. You know, we are running out of time today. I cannot answer that question in another five minutes, but it's possible, okay? It uses what we call a successive recursive algorithm. In other words, instead of you know, using the usual algorithm, Dijkstra's algorithm, what you do, is you explore in a breadth-first search way 
and then eventually you will expand the circle far enough to go from the source to the destination. So it's not quite the modified Dijkstra's algorithm that we have talked about. This one can only go find the path, the shortest path from one vertex to another vertex, but it can be done. And that's all without using the concept of a list. It's really just based on all the primitives that we have talked about a little bit earlier. So that's another potential, okay? All right, so do we have any questions at this point about um, prologue? Because the prologue is predicate calculus. Basically, it is predicate, predicate calculus implemented as a programming language. No one has any questions? All right. We'll do one more thing, okay? We've got five more minutes. So we'll look up prologue in Wikipedia. And Wikipedia, interestingly, only makes up a very small percentage of the text used to train chat and GPT. You can actually look up the statistics, like you know, how does it get all the text you know, to train itself. Uh, the entire Wikipedia is a single digit percentage. <laughs> that tells you something. <laughs> all right, so this is Wikipedia. And if you look at the, um, the age or when it first appears, it has the same age as what is the other programming language that's really popular that is at about the same time, that was invented at about the same time? Java. No, no. Java came much later. Java is a late 90s you know, kind of thing. Okay. So it's, no, COBOL is earlier. COBOL is a 60, 1960s you know, product. So it's Fortran. C, not C++, but regular, just plain C. So it is as old as plain C, okay? But because it's a very niche kind of programming language, it never really gained a whole lot of traction. It was also not invented in the United States. It was developed in France. So it's a very interesting little awkward programming language. It was once considered the programming language of AI back in the 80s. So in Europe and Japan, they use Prolog. In, in the United States, they use LISP, L-I-S-P, which stands for List Processing. So those were the two symbolic processing languages for quote-unquote AI for reasoning stuff. So they focus only on reasoning, logic, and stuff like that, you know, all the formalities, but they did not do anything like neural network back in those days. Why? Exactly, they did not have process the processing power needed. They knew about the theory of neural networks already, but they lacked the processing power, so they couldn't do anything with the theory of neural networks, or I should say, you know, to be more specific, back propagation networks, because that's how you train a neural network, is you show it something, the neural network, the neural network will give you, you know, an answer, which is most likely wrong, okay? So what you do, you, you say, okay, that's the wrong answer. This is the right answer. So the difference between the wrong answer and the right answer, that delta is back propagated and they change the synaptic values of the neurons. So if you have enough data to get to, to train the neural network, hopefully it will learn the pattern. That's how you know, neural network learning you know, occurs is it, it really is just making very small adjustments in the syn synaptic um, weights until you know, it gives you a consistent answer. And it takes at least tens of thousands of samples to train the neural network to do anything. But we don't, we don't learn that way, okay? So neural networks is not really the answer. And even Altman said, you know, this, you know the, the current approach of chat GPT is not the solution. He knew that. All right. Do we have any questions? So this is a new topic. I would highly encourage everyone to read the module that talks about you know, the programming language a little bit, but it also talks about the mechanism of how it gets things done, which is just based on substitution. So Prolog, the Prolog engine is a fairly simple engine. It's easy to write. The power of Prolog has to do with the ability for it to recursively search for an answer. 
do all the retraction automatically and look for alternative ways to go forward again. So you know that's the power of Prolog. So we're going to stop here, okay? And then next time, I would either choose um, the shortest path you know, uh, approach or shortest path you know, uh, project or the sibling approach, I mean cousins, the cousin project you know, for your homework assignment. So, but it is important for you to kind of play with it a little bit, okay? Um, the website is right here. It is uh, swish.swiprolog.org. I'll send you guys you know, the link here because I suspect some of you might want to go try out a few things you know, because I think it's really quite interesting. Now, we haven't seen anything yet because there's nothing recursive here. But when it comes to ancestry, it is recursive. When you define who, what is an ancestor and you only have definitions of parents, then ancestry is a recursive definition. A is, a, is the typical transitive um, property of relations. So A is an ancestor of C only if A is an ancestor of B and B is a parent of C. All right? But it is recursive now, okay? That's how you do loops in Prolog. There's no loop concept. You use recursion to implement loops. So I can only say that much at this point. No spoilers you know, for Wednesday. So we'll talk about you know, all of that good stuff on Wednesday. So yes, there is class on Wednesday. <laughs> hmm?